So today was a very unexpected snow day in the shop. We used the day to let Luciano's clear dry an extra day, and it will be to our benefit to do that. I did a little experimenting and testing, but nothing conclusive with the, the foam camera sound uh, dampeners that Steve recommended. Did some polishing on the bolts and the kickstand that Bill sent, and basically had a lot of fun in the kitchen with Karen. You'll see. Now it's funny to me <clears throat> how quick chan plans can change and today is a good example. I come out to the garage, I'm doing my thing with the battery chargers, checking everything. I turn around and the phone rings and Karen says, come on inside, it's snowing outside. No prediction of snow whatsoever. I actually was thinking I might even get another ride today. I got the ride yesterday, I got to finish up the clear on Luciano's H1, not finish it, the base coats, and that's down the cellar drying already, and I'm out here, I'm not out in the garage a half an hour so far, and I open the door, and I'm in a winter wonderland. What the hell's going on here with this weather? Now, people that follow my channel know, my philosophy in the winter is, if it's 40 degrees or above, we ride. And yesterday, I took advantage of that, I got a short ride, even though it's a short ride, and Here's a funny thing that happened. I came back and I checked the mileage on the bike. And I said, oh, I only got 100 miles to go. Well, it wasn't 100, it was 1,000. <laughs> oh, if, if you think being old is nothing but a load of laughs, you're right. It is. I have 1,000 miles to go, not 100, so I, I don't have to panic. And I was thinking today, one of my goals for being out here was, I was thinking maybe it'd be warm, it'd warm up into the 40s this afternoon. I'd get the, the FCR and the RD, get a short test ride locally, of course, and <laughs> it's not going to happen today. We, we are in one of, those, one of those days where we're very unpredictable, but whatever it is, we don't have much choice about it. So all our test riding, of course, will probably now be put off for a couple of days, minimum, and We'll see where this weather is going to go. But as I always have in the middle of the winter, I always have some projects to work on downstairs, some to work on in the garage, and of course, 40 degrees, and we, we would love to ride. That's the bottom line. I'll see what Karen has planned today. I may wind up spending the day making cookies. So boy, am I glad we got to ride yesterday, because this, when you don't live in this part of the country where it's so unpredictable, this is what happens. This is in a half an hour. This is how much it has snowed. When I came out to the garage before, and it really wasn't even that cold. <laughs> and look at this. Wow. This changes my whole plan for the day. <laughs> but not the plan to have a cup of coffee. So as unpredictable as this day is, there's really one thing that's never unpredictable. How that coffee is going to taste. Because that garage... Right now, I, it may be by the end of the day, we'll be shoveling snow or whatever. But Karen has this thing that our, uh, my son Craig sent us, and we haven't used it yet. We're going to play with it today. The ultimate Instapot. And the plants never change for the birds. Snow, rain, or sun. They love to have good company in the morning. So Karen says, I have to learn how to use the Instapot today. <laughs> Oh my God. Oh, you got some ingredients prepped up already? I got to read the directions, which of course, this, this could go off the rails in a hurry. We have a fire extinguisher handy? We do. Okay. So while we're getting ready to do the Instapot today, oh, I just want to touch that. Ooh, Luciano, that's going to be so nice. Now, the next step on this, we're going to let this dry a day or two. It's under a heating vent. You almost can't feel this, but I know I can finalize this with some... I, I guess 2,000 grit paper, maybe 1,500, and get that final coat on so when you close your eyes, you don't even feel that. And I'm sure Luciano will appreciate that, but I'll talk to him and see. Maybe he wants to pick it up just the way it is now. I don't know. And if it really snowed, we get snowed in. I was waiting for a day I could do this. Now, I didn't want to... This, this is a part you just can't buy. And I had cut this part off when I put the tuned exhaust. I have two different tuned exhausts. And I'm doing all my evil twin thing of swapping parts around. And this piece, now I could weld it back on, but what I did, I made a bolt, if you remember right. And then halfway through one of my rides, I was 
I was pretty far from home when it happened too. Uh, at the piece bent, and I could, when I bent it back, it broke. Then I made one with a hardened bolt that didn't break, a grade, a, a grade 8 bolt or whatever it was, and that worked. But then Bill, and thank you, Bill, again, he sent me this. He must have had this in his inventory, and I want to do a total restoration. Now, it's a small detail, but I want to do I'd get a nice finish on this, make it really nice, shiny black, polish the spring that goes to it, polish the bolt, get some nice fresh wheel bearing grease on it and and you think that's a small detail part nobody would notice and then people argue with me about this all the time oh nobody will notice that nobody will see that somebody walks up to the bike and goes wow nice shiny kickstand <laughs> and then it, it lets the air out of that balloon but it's true small details make the job and this came now turbo steve has been using this with some good success it, it it's a little sock that goes over the camera and it's supposed to help with the wind noise. We don't know. Obviously not going to ride or be able to test it today. But what's going to be difficult is because the way I mount this into the jacket, I don't know how I'm going to have to modify this to do that. I don't know if it's even going to be possible. But if not, I'll just give these to Turbo Steve and he can work with it. But it is, it is a wind resistance. It's supposed to work. Steve has had some good luck with it. I have a remote microphone for the GoPros. I don't know if this is going to work better than the remote mic. Again, well, I guess we're going to find out at some... <laughs> we're not going to find out today. So we got to plan a day. Now, this is the whole thing. In my shop and in my life, I wake up in the morning and there's, there's plans. I have to figure out how to keep the trains running. And today, today we're going to have some fun. And I still have two tires to mount, as if the day wasn't confusing enough, but not going to mount tires today. You know what this pot looks like it's going to be good for? This will be great for cleaning motorcycle parts. <laughs> I know Luciano uses the dishwasher, but <laughs> I, this is a great thing for cleaning motorcycle parts. Mm, I can't wait to see what's going on there. So as I'm reading the directions and this of how to get this steam cooker working, the, everything is some, some minor assembly required. Boy, oh boy. Anyway, this looks like it's going to be great for cleaning carburetor parts, and Karen doesn't agree, though. Now, it's just funny. Karen just told me our neighbors got the exact same thing, and they got, took the directions out. There's 40 pages of directions. <laughs> Put it back in a box and sent it back. I guess they didn't have any carburetors to clean. I guess not. It's pretty cool. We're doing our little test run. I'm looking. <clears throat> the test is you boil some water here and you get used to the controls. But I'm thinking how good that did with carburetor cleaner in there. <laughs> so while we're running that, that initial cycle, we're getting all our ingredients ready. And you can see they're all freshly prepped. Prepped by the master. Boy, this thing throws off some heat, baby, while we're sautéing up the onions. Whoa! <laughs> Alright, as my, as my cooking lesson for the day goes on here, I don't know if this is going to come out as good as I think it is, but... We're giving it our best shot here. Sautéing everything up before we put the lid on. How's that look, baby? I look good? Excellent. This is absolutely delicious. Absolutely. Now, how much extra spice did you put in this? A yes. lot? No, not a lot. Not a lot? Okay. Now, with my cooking lesson complete, and hey, that, that stuff really did taste good. The chili, wow. Anyway, well, let's figure out if we can see if this is going to even be close to working. Now, Turbo Steve shared this information, he said, and he showed me his videos that he posts. They they were pretty good, so I'm trying to figure out. Now, I think what I ought to do is, are they both the same? Yeah, they're both the same. This one's not the same. One, what it is in packing, one is squash, so I may as well, I may as well use the good one first. Keep that for a spare. 
and just see now this is made for the GoPro GoPro 3 they have different ones for the 7 and the 8 and and whatever let's just see if this works and there may be some tricks to this that I don't know see I don't know when you use this it's an ongoing thing to try to figure out how to get rid of wind noise and people with million dollar budgets <laughs> these news shows when they interview people with a big a microphone this big with a big fur dead cat on it and and they have wind noise so I don't know that I don't know that we're even going to be able to do this but we certainly will try to give it a try now I assume this is what they want you to do since obviously anything you ever get from China there's no directions okay so that covers pretty much the microphone I would think I would see that that's the way to go here how do we get this off now Ugh. okay that's off and there's the lens so that looks like that would be the scenario Now, I'm trying to share useful information. This is my own custom mount. In fact, I can take, I always keep a piece of safety tape on there. If I can get rid of that for right now. I do have, this is how I've dealt with it in the past. The, the wire, and this is a remote mic. I have three different ones. They were three different prices. They look different, and they all work exactly the same. I have a feeling the guts are all the same. The wire then goes through the back of the jacket under the safety pad. And believe it or not, the material this is made out of and this is made of look exactly the same. But uh, in either case, this, I don't know that if I took this, in, in the times I've used the other mic that I took this off, I didn't see a big difference. It may be that they both work the same. I don't know that. See, I'm not an acoustical engineer. I don't pretend to be. But I'm willing to experiment, especially when people like Turbo Steve that have spent a lot of more money than I have try to figure this stuff out and and what's good Steve of course share the information now I'm wondering even with this sock on here is that going to mount let's see if it's our lucky day it looks like that's not oh the, the problem is I just turned the camera on I, I have to know I don't know if I can see it under there uh, might be a problem this is the stuff you don't think is important until you actually go to do it and then all of a sudden there's a problem yeah I did turn the camera on that's a problem so I've got to know that and the only way you can tell if the camera's on the light is beeping so I want to shut the camera off okay that's a five beeper so now it would look like it would look like the first thing I need to know is I need to cut a window or something so I can turn the camera on I need to have two windows in there, in fact. This is where I'm going to have to talk to Turbo Steve about this and see what he thinks, if, if that's a possibility. It's going to be hard to do this. This is the stuff you never think is going to be important until you go to do it. You would have to, I'm guessing. See, now what I do when I'm riding the motorcycle, I turn the camera on and off. If I see traffic in front of me, no point taking pictures at the back of a bus or something. Now with the camera like this, I'm wondering if, if you can even turn it on. Let's see if the ca yeah, camera's on. Okay, so that's a doable thing. But I still have to know if the camera's on. I, there's no way you can see it. Camera's off. Now can you shut? Okay, camera's totally off. So that part of it, I don't know if that's something you can live with or not. Now, Turbo Steve has a remote control. I have a remote control too, but I've never used it. So I think what this is going to be, and I noticed this this is something I wanted to show on a video where information shares. This, this may be mechanically a good way to do the sound, but I don't know about shutting the camera on and off. But what I can do is in the middle of the ride, if this isn't working the way I want, We'll be ready the next day we actually can go out on a road and do a test. We'll be able to fool with this a little bit and see if this, and maybe it doesn't work at all. Maybe it works the same as the foam on the remote mic. I won't know, but this is information that I have a gut feeling. We can make it all these things that you do. The remote mic makes it a little better. 
that, and, and other things make it better. But the thing that makes it the best is have a loud motorcycle because the loud sound overrides, the exhaust overrides the wind noise. When you have a quiet bike, the wind noise gets to be the dominant noise. Let's see if this works in the future. This is, I'm ready to test it the first day we get out on the open road. So this is the kickstand I got from Bill and I gotta have to get a wrench for that. And it's, of course, it's, it's a, there's no way it cannot work. And the fact that I have this piece here will weld it on, factory weld. This will be a nice upgrade for the RD and I can get rid of my concoction thing there. But I really want to spend the time to do a nice finish on it. So the first thing I'm going to have to do, of course, I'll get that bolt out. And then I want to take it over to the wire wheel, clean off if I can, clean off as much of this rust as possible. Maybe even if it stops snow and get a coat of primer on it today. And then the next time I work on Luciano's job where I have the clear, I'll get the black and the clear on it. But if I can get this in prime today, as well as knowing that I'm going to have chili for supper tonight, <laughs> whether I like it or not. Actually, that pot worked pretty good today. And the camera thing, like everything in life that you're experimenting with, sometimes there is no answer. This wind noise, I know for a fact. People, people wrestle with this, professionals, newsmen. And then I see on a, on a professional, the guy pulls up with the van and with that big microphone. And, and you hear in the background, shh. So I don't know that there's a cure. I don't know how much better we can make it. But it's an ongoing thing, just like it is with the old motorcycles. Now, constantly making little upgrades. A lot of people don't think it's necessary. Well, I, that's in the eye of the beholder. I like the fact that this will be looking better than when it left, left the factory when I'm done with it. And this is what the bolt looks like before I get to go over to the wire wheel. So the bolt polished right up. Now we want to get as much of that paint off of that kickstand as possible. Now I know a lot of people, I won't mention any names, they would just take some barbecue paint and say, ah, nobody else see the kickstand. Well, the gods see everywhere. Keep that in mind, the gods see everywhere. It's the end of some famous poem, and I don't know the poem, but I do remember that line. And I think we can get, as, by getting all of the rust off of this, this is a pretty special part, and I really have to thank Bill again and again, because these are not parts you can just go, you know, find in a junkyard. Somebody has to be generous enough to donate something like this. This is really a, a keeper part for me, and I want to I preserve it and make it as nice a part of the motorcycle as possible. So the first thing is to get all that rust off, number one. Well, we're not going to be able to paint today. It's still snowing out there, but that part is now ready. And we're, we're actually prepped up for the next day we're able to paint. So before I end the video, I want to thank Turbo Steve again for this idea. Let's hope it works. But, but even when things don't work, at least then you try them and you know they don't work. And these are inexpensive enough to buy 10 bucks for two of them. That I look forward to testing it, and I look forward to figuring out a way I can see if the camera's on. But I think by cutting a hole in this, maybe it defeats the purpose of doing it. I don't know, but I know at the end of it, I'll know more than I know now. And, and Bill, again, thank you. I love to do little upgrades on my motorcycle collection. This is one of them. When I'm done with this, I'll have a nice gloss coat of black on it. I'll polish the spring. The bolt's already polished little updates and you think nobody's going to notice yeah well i notice and it's i'm i'm one of the people that counts maybe the only person that counts 
Anyway, we had a great time today. Even though it snowed, it changed my whole plans for the day. We had fun with that Instapot. That was a great thing. And I have something really good for supper. That chili that we made. Anyway, I want to thank the healthcare workers. Guys, well, I, I say it over and over. I sound like a broken record, but I really mean it. I really do. Thank you for keeping us healthy. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Share it with your friends if you did. I enjoy editing them. I enjoy making them. And I love to share my passion for old motorcycles. So thank you again for watching. And I do try to post up something motorcycle related almost every day. A day like today. <laughs> Snow, crock pots, cooking. <laughs> you never know where a day is going to go. And that's what I love about my life. No Groundhog Days. Anyway, we have several other projects we're going to be working on really soon, including finishing up Luciano's H1 and this kickstand and mounting some tires. And if it ever, if the weather ever cooperates, maybe some test rides and working with that Turbo Steve thing. Anyway, thank you so much, guys, for watching. I really do appreciate it.